Well, a very good morning to you and a happy new year. It's really lovely to be together. Welcome uh, if you're together with us in the building this morning and welcome equally if you're joining us on Zoom. It's really great to be together as we start this new year together in the company of our God who does not change. As I was reflecting uh, on the opportunity to gather this morning, uh, I was reflecting on just how much the world has not only changed in many ways in the last 12 months, but equally is continuing to change. It seems as if the situation is ongoingly fluid. And we're reminded in the words of the Bible that God is with us in all of those changes. Nothing catches God by surprise, and he's with us in those changes. And yet in everything that changes, he also is the one who does not change and therefore is a sure and firm foundation. As we begin this new year, and we don't know what lies ahead precisely, what fabulous good news to know that God is with us and that God is with us as the one who doesn't change and is not surprised by anything that comes along. Uh, if you're on Zoom, the words for the service will appear on the screen uh, as we go through the service. And thanks very much to Hayley, as ever, who uh, is sat behind our computer screen uh, and will be helping you through the service uh, with the words as you need them. If we're in church, then the words will appear on the screens. Do join in heartily with humming, uh, if you can heartily hum. Uh, and, and at home, do join in with singing our songs and hymns as we go through our service. Equally, if you're on Zoom, please do stay around for coffee. Uh, at the end of the service if you'd like to. As we remember the Feast of Epiphany and the coming of the kings to worship the Lord Jesus, then on the screen is going to appear an expression of our praise and worship this morning as we join our worship across the ages with theirs. Please, as we go through the service, do join in the elements in bold, heartily. We might not be able to sing heartily in church, but we can certainly join together with the words in bold at the appropriate points. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever. As your living word eternal in heaven, assumed the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Well, the kings or magi or wise men, as we sometimes call them, have traveled a long way. Uh, it's possible that they heard about the prophesied Lord Jesus from Jews who may have been exiled to their lands many centuries previously and who'd shared the message of the good news with them. And it's a great reminder to us today that the good news of Jesus is global. It's always been global. Even in the New Testament, there were worshippers of the living God living in Egypt and living in Babylon. And that's what the psalm that's appointed for this morning reminds us of. And so can I encourage us, if we're able, to stand together and we're going to join together in the words that have kind of encompassed that global worshipping community in the words of Psalm 87. Let's celebrate that good news as we say together now. His foundation is on the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things of you are spoken, Zion, city of our God. I record Egypt and Babylon as those who know me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre and Ethiopia, in Zion were they born, and of Zion it shall be said, each one was born in her, and the Most High himself has established her. The Lord will, will record as he writes up the peoples, 
this one also was born there. And as they dance, they shall sing. All my fresh springs are in you. Well, let's remain standing if you'd like to. And we're going to join together in the words of our first hymn. According to the psalm, we can dance as well. I'm not sure whether dancing is kind of part of your cultural expression of worship. It might be that you dance on the inside, but we can certainly um, hum as we join together in our opening uh, hymn or carol, We Three Kings of Orient Are. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we travel so far Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, oh star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading, still proceeding guide us with your perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, God may I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, Star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, Guide us with your perfect light. Frank incense to offer have I, Incense owns a deity nigh, Prayer and praising, all men raising, Worship him, God most high. O oh, star of wonder, star of night, Star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, Guide us with your perfect light. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume Breathes a life of gathering gloom Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying Sealed in the stone-cold tomb Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us with thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, heaven to earth replies. Oh, star of wonder, star of bright, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us with thy perfect light. Please do be seated. As we come now to listen to the Bible as Chris and Jim read to us, we remind ourselves that this is the word of life, which was from the beginning. We proclaim you. The darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. The word of life, which was from the beginning. That which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hands, we proclaim you. 
for our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim you. Chris, do come and read for us. The first reading is taken from the prophecy of Zechariah, chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I am jealous for her with great wrath. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts shall be called the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with staff in hand because of their great age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, even though it seems impossible to the remnant of this people in these days, should it also seem impossible to me, says the Lord of hosts? Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them to live in Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in faithfulness and in righteousness. Thanks be to God. And the Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2 and reading from verse 1. After Jesus, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the king of Herod. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard that he was, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him, when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Now, before turning to consider the passage, which is the traditional Bible reading for Epiphany, let me add my best wishes for, to you all for the new year. 
praying that 2021 will enable us more fully to share together in the joy we have in Christ. Now as a church, unable to hold our crib services in gathered form because of the COVID restrictions, we laid on an outdoor trail followed by many families in our community under the title, Follow the Star, a reference to what is recounted in the passage from Matthew's Gospel. Secular comment also drew attention to the conjunction between the planets Jupiter and Saturn when their orbits brought them into close alignment, so they appeared almost as a single bright star just above the western horizon in the early evening, with this phenomenon being most clearly seen on the 21st of December, which is the winter, winter solstice, the darkest day of winter. BBC and other media comment sources commented that it was either 400 or 800 years since there had been such a close conjunction, that it would be a further 400 years until another occurred so clearly, and they speculated whether such a conjunction might have been the star that led the wise men from the east to the infant Jesus. They're probably correct, but before thinking further about that possibility, we ought to perhaps untangle some of the accretions to the description of the nativity of Christ from what is actually stated in the Gospel reading. Firstly, it is not said that the visitors were kings, though they were almost certainly rich or influential, since the Magi were the scientists and advisors of Persia, that's modern Iran, and in related Middle Eastern cultures, as we can read in the book of Daniel. Even if today we might regard them more as astrologers than astronomers, though at the time they were in effect both astronomer and astrologer. Secondly, there is no reference to the actually being three Magi, merely that there were three kinds of gifts. It does not even say they were necessarily wise men rather than wise women, though they were probably men given the culture of the time. Finally, it does not say that they came to Jesus at Bethlehem, only that the Jewish religious authorities pointed to the prophecy in the book of Micah that the king of the Jews would be born in Bethlehem, and that was where they were directed to go by Herod. As it would have been some months after Jesus' birth before they arrived, they would not have been present with the shepherds in the stable, but most likely, as it said, in a house, and that house was probably back in Nazareth in Galilee. Such would be consistent with the nativity narrative in Luke's Gospel, where it says after they had given... Um, the offerings in the temple and seen Simeon and Anna, they went back to Nazareth, in fact, not back to Bethlehem. And that was only a few days, or 23, I think it is, days uh, following the uh, birth. So what are the star that led the Magi to Jesus? To look for explanations, we have to make sure that we're looking at the right time, since it is almost universally recognized that the birth of Jesus took place earlier than the current division between BC and AD because it took place while Herod the Great ruled Palestine, the cruel and tyrannical puppet king on behalf of the Roman occupier. The early church made a miscalculation when they set the date of Jesus' birth some hundreds of years later. Now it is commonly accepted that Herod died in 4 BC, as Joseph, Josephus, a Jewish historian, writes that he died a year after an eclipse of the moon was observed in Jerusalem and there was such a partial eclipse turning the moon blood red in appearance in 5 BC. Given his order to kill baby boys up to the age of two, we may need to look back to 7 BC or even to 8 BC when Quirinius is known to have given an order for a census to be taken. However, some historians suggest that Herod did not die until 1 BC, following a further total eclipse of the moon in 2 BC, the period in which we need to look for records of the star is therefore between 1 and 8 BC. And what could it have been? A supernova or exploding star, a comet or a conjunction of planets as we have just seen. What would just took place was too, it was too cloudy and too built up where I live, around my house for it to see it. But my daughter said it was clearly visible on the south coast near Portsmouth. Well, neither Chinese, Middle Eastern nor Egyptian astronomers record a significant supernova in that period. There is a comet recorded in 5 BC that could have been the star, and the Lion Handbook of the Bible suggests that this may be of what, what was observed, with the tail of the comet appearing to give a directional in indication. Alternatively, there was a conjunction of Jupiter and Venus in 2 BC that could be the solution, though that would give very little time for the events of the Nativity 
and the subsequent massacre of the infants in Bethlehem by Herod before his death. To me, the most convincing possibility is that of a very rare triple conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn, which occurred in the summer and late autumn of 7 BC. It would have appeared like a single, very bright star that seemed to guide them from the east, and then later on to baby Jesus. The Magi would have attributed great significance to such a repeated conjunction, coupled with those prophecies of which Simon referred earlier. The planets would have appeared to come together in a repeated conjunction. They would have appeared to come together in the summer of 7 BC, would have parted and then come together again in a different part of the sky in the autumn, as the planets followed their different orbits around the sun. Perhaps this would have occurred while they were trekking westwards near Damascus, which they were most likely would have passed through to avoid the desert areas between uh, Persia and Jerusalem. A historian has therefore suggested that the actual birth of Christ probably took place in 7 BC, when the conjunction would have appeared in the constellation that astrologers would have particularly associated with the Jews. Hence the visit to Jerusalem and their audience with King Herod and the advice of the Jewish religious leaders. The final conjunction in that year took place in December, which may have directed the Magi to their actual encounter with Christ. Such a possibility fits both with the period of the reign of King Herod, as referred to in the reading, and also later in Christ's ministry in his 30s, the period when Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of Judea. For me, this is the most convincing solution, but one of the other possibilities may be what occurred. The key point to remember is not to choose between the possibilities which of the possibilities were, was actually the star that led the Magi to Christ, but that there are historical possibilities to back up the record in Matthew's Gospel that was read to us, so we can trust that record. But what is the significance of that encounter for us today? Firstly, it tells of the initial occasion that Gentiles, that is, people like us, came to understand that the Saviour and Lord of all creation entered into the world he had created, the psalm that we read earlier in this service, Psalm 87, perhaps should have given people an expectation that this would be so, but it's, uh, and it shouldn't have been a surprise after the Jewish couple, Mary and Joseph, the Jewish shepherds, Simeon and Anna, had worshipped the baby Jesus. For as far back as Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, God told Abraham that all the peoples on earth would be blessed through his offspring. It took a long time for the Jewish people and even Jesus' own disciples to fully accept this, as recorded in the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles. And even today, we need to constantly remind ourselves that the Gospel is for all. No one is exclu excluded from the saving love of Christ, whatever their ethnicity, background, or other characteristics. This point is reinforced by the fact that these wealthy and influential, influential sorry, visitors in the person of the Magi encountered Christ after the poor, if not outcast, shepherds and the widowed Anna. God does have a particular concern for the poor, the weak, and suffering, so we need to remember the teachings of Christ, so as not to presume on our place in the kingdom of God, with the advantages in life that most, if not all of us, have compared to so many. A. H. McNeil put it like this, the Son of God was revealed to Jew first, and also to Gentile, to Mother and Joseph first, and also to foreign astrologers. He was revealed to the humble and ignorant first, and then to the honorable and learned, to the poor first, and then to the rich. He was also revealed by methods suited to the understanding of those who met with Christ, with their object of their coming to him, not for personal advantage, but to give the homage due to him. So what are the gifts that the Magi gave to the holy baby Jesus? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold to recognize his kingship over us as our creator and Lord over the earth and Lord of our lives. Do we let Christ have lordship in our lives? He calls us friends if we do what he commands us. We have God's instructions to us in his word. Do we study it to discern its application to every aspect of our lives and seek the power of the Holy Spirit that we may be obedient? Frankincense to recognize his priestly role revealing the true loving nature of God to us and encouraging us in our worship. It's the central desire of our lives, the worship of God, for all that he has done for us and can do for us day by day. Worship should be corporate, but also individual 
so that during lockdown, we can still worship on our own, for there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And myrrh, a spice used to anoint and embalm the dead, to recognize that Jesus as the Christ would die on the cross as our Savior, so our sins can be forgiven and we can have access into the presence of God without fear, with the barrier of our sins removed. Thus we can have peace with God now and for eternity in his presence. Is this always in the forefront of our minds? We do not earn our salvation. It is because of the love of God, his grace and his mercy that we receive eternal life. We receive what we need to live for God in this life here on earth an assurance that this grace will be sufficient to bring us into his presence for all eternity. That is why Jesus could say, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We can all make these three gifts our own by the way we live, echoing the words of Christina Rossetti at the end of my favorite carol in the bleak midwinter. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give my heart. But before finally concluding, there is perhaps a wider message for our society as a whole. The media drew attention to the fact that the planetary conjunction in December may have been the star that led wise men to come and worship Jesus. And there seems to be some evidence of a revival of spiritual interest in the current pandemic that we are living through. Tom Wright, in his book, God and the Pandemic, strenuously resists the argument that the pandemic is a sign to turn the West back to God, arguing that we already had the final sign before the second coming in the incarnation, teaching, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thus we know what we should be doing is to give effect to the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. This is clearly true, but as John Lesnick suggests in his book that we distributed in the church and in the community, where is God in the coronavirus world? The current tribulation that is being experienced, which is by no means the worst the world has experienced since the incarnation and ascension of Christ back to his throne in heaven, does give us an opportunity to witness to the security we have in Christ, to give thanks for the skills that he has given to doctors and scientists to care for those affected and produce remedies to overcome the illness. And perhaps above all, to reflect on what it is important to safeguard and pursue in the changed world that we should be able to return to sometime in 2021, now that the vaccines are being rolled out. So may our own personal homage to our Lord, our God, and our Saviour also inspire us to witness to the love of God and to seek a better, fairer, and more just society, including care for the poor, the homeless, the refugee, and the persecuted across our nation and the world and a more sustainable stewardship of the wonderful creation of which we are part. Amen. Thank you to uh, Peter and uh, for such a clear explanation um, of that setting of Matthew chapter 2. We're now going to join our voices together in a statement of faith, uh, often called a creed, but this creed is going to be taken from Isaiah chapter 9. It reminds us that as we join our voices together, we're reminded of those marvellous words from Psalm 87 about how God's word uh, revealed uh, to that Jewish people has become a light for the whole world. And so as we join our voices together, we're reminding ourselves that we're not only gathered here, but we're gathered with Christians today around the world, some of whom will have been remembering Jesus, the light of the world in their worship already, some of whom because of uh, the time zones of the world are yet to do so. Uh, but equally remind ourselves of the time zones of history that we gather together 
in a great company of God's people. And we gather with the voice of Isaiah, who was proclaiming this light centuries before Jesus walked the earth, as God had revealed that truth to Isaiah. Shall we stand together and declare what we believe with them and in the voice of Isaiah, as we say, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, upon them the light has dawned. You have increased their joy and given them great gladness. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest. For you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the collar that lay heavy on their shoulders. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Well, please do be seated. And as God's people across the generations have been doing, we're now going to bring our prayers to him as Judith comes and leads us together. Let's pray together. Everlasting Father, we praise and glorify you for sending us your son, born of Mary, in a stable to live among us and to show us your way. Like the wise men paying homage to the child, may we offer the gifts and talents you have given us to show your love for all. Help us to enter this new year with renewed determination to relieve the poor, to feed the hungry, to care for the lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wonderful Counselor, we thank you for the points of agreement reached so far between us and our European neighbours. We pray that we may move into a relationship that is just and fair for all. In this pandemic, we have appreciated afresh the beauty of your creation and the joy that the natural world can give us. May we not forget and live thoughtlessly, but work in new ways towards conserving what you have given us. We lift to you all those who are suffering from floods, forest fires, or drought, and ask that you will guide us in living our lives in a more sustainable way that is good for all. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, we lift to you all, wherever in the world they might be, who are suffering from COVID, and those who selflessly care for them. Strengthen them and give them and their families rest and comfort. We thank and praise you for the good news this week of the licensing of the Oxford vaccine and for the speed with which vaccines are being developed and administered. 
we ask that we may feel your presence with us and especially with those who have lost loved ones as we wait for a return to a more healthy world. Lord, in your mercy. Prince of Peace, we pray for Gemma, our vicar, her family and all the clergy team who have guided us and helped us to continue our worship of you in different ways. We lift to you our mission partners here and overseas and ask for your protection for them as they reach out with your love. Lord, in your mercy. And now, a prayer sent out one Christmas by the Sisters of the Church, one of our mission partners. May this eternal truth be always on our hearts, that the God who breathed this world into being, placed stars in the heavens, and designed a butterfly's wing, is the God who entrusted his life to the care of ordinary people, became vulnerable that we might know how strong is the power of love. A mystery so deep it is impossible to grasp. A mystery so beautiful it is impossible to ignore. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, as our Saviour taught us, so we join together with brothers and sisters around the world. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We've remembered in the company of those uh, wise men this morning that the good news of the Lord Jesus is for everyone, and that we're part of a global good news community. Uh, we remind ourselves, uh, therefore, in our notices this morning that there's lots going on in the Avonside mission area with our partner churches and that we're part of that wider body of witness to Jesus across northwest Bristol. And there's lots to look forward to in the term ahead. Uh, it might be uh, that uh, if you've uh, enjoyed looking at some of the alpha material in small groups, that you'd like to recommend that to uh, a friend or to a neighbour. There are some opportunities being offered by the other asthma churches that we could connect anybody who's interested in exploring that alpha material, a kind of a way of looking at the Christian faith. Um, uh, and we can put them in contact with courses uh, being run by other churches in the area. We'd love to do that. Uh, and equally, if you're here and you haven't been able to access the Alpha material but would like to do so, then do let me know. If you contact our church office, then we can put you in contact. Another opportunity being offered by uh, this church uh, and by other churches in the mission area is what we're calling well-being groups. We're aware of the fact that during the recent uh, pandemic, 
uh, there have been uh, many people experiencing different issues with mental health uh, and we'd love to offer the chance of uh, connection and the chance for discussion uh, in a, uh, a very welcoming way. The groups have been tried and tested across the country and in our local area as well and have been appreciated by those who have joined in. And so if you'd like uh, more details for yourself or for a friend uh, of how to join those groups, they're being offered in the coming term as well. Uh, and uh, it seems rather uh, ahead of time to be thinking of this now, but we're looking forward to our Lent course. Lent starts this year on the 17th of February, so it's not that far off. And together with our uh, asthma partner churches, we're going to be offering a Lent course. Uh, we're going to be offering that uh, virtually in the main. Uh, and uh, we're teaming up with Hazelnut Community Farm to do that. And there's going to be a series of five studies all based around care for creation. Uh, and so more details of that to follow. But it might be that you'd like to mark that in your diary. Uh, and I'll be talking to small group leaders as to how we can facilitate those courses. Gemma in her weekly church matters and email uh, has reminded us that there's the opportunity to take part in a, a mission area survey that we do year in year out and if you'd like to do that then please just click, click on the link in the email. For all other news as to what's going on in the coming week and uh, in the coming uh, weeks of the new year do look at church matters which will have dropped into your inbox. But now we're going to conclude our worship this morning by joining together in one closing hymn. Please do stand if you're able. It's a great epiphany hymn. Brightest and best are the sons of the morning. Let's sing together. Brightest and best are the sons of the morning. Dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star of the eastern horizon adorning, guide where our infant redeemer is laid. Cold on his cradle the dewdrops are shining, Low lies his head with the beasts of the stall. Angels adore him in slumber reclining. Maker and honor and saviour of all. Say, shall we yield him in costly devotion? Orders of Eden and offerings divine, gems of the mountain and pearls of the ocean, more from the forest or gold from the mine. Vainly we offer each ample oblation, Vainly with gifts would his favor secure. Richer by far is the heart's adoration. Dearer to God are the prayers of the poor. Brightest and best are the sons of the morning. Dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star of the eastern horizon adoring, guide where our infant redeemer is laid. Well, as we leave the building this morning, we'll be leaving, I suspect, to quite quiet streets. Uh, I'm not sure about you, but as we had that reading read from Zachariah earlier, uh, some particular words resonated with me, which are perhaps helpful in our hoping for the new year. The prophets remind us that the good news of the hope of Jesus never dies. Old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, 
each with staff in hand because of their great age. And the city, the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. As we go out now, let's go with the blessing of God Almighty, a prayer of blessing. Almighty God, in the birth of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate world and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in his light and dwell in his love, that we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever and so the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit keep you in his love and light and peace and be with you as you share that love light and peace with all those you meet this day and forevermore amen Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. As we leave the church now, do please leave uh, as the wardens direct you. Uh, if you're able, down the stairs on this side at the front. And if you're on Zoom, you could either decide to leave now, or if you'd like to stay on, then Haley will put you into groups so that you can share coffee together. God bless your week. Thank you.